This morning, whenever I went to go to work today, I put on my suit that was made in Mexico, my shirt that was made in Malaysia, my shoes that were made in Italy, and I got into my truck that was made in Fort Wayne, Indiana, with parts from China, Japan, India, and the rest of the world. I went, then I went up to my office, sat down at my computer desk, and turned on my computer that was made in Texas, the parts shipped in from China and India. And then I printed out this speech that I'm talking about right now and pulled out my pen that was made in Germany. The point I'm trying to make here is that we, as the Economic Development Committee, meet here every Tuesday afternoon and work on creating jobs and building businesses here in Missouri. We cannot quit looking for jobs at the state line or even the borders of the United States. Like it or not, we're a global economy. And if we, as the Missouri Assembly, do not grab this opportunity with both hands, we're going to lose it to another state. We have a chance right now here in Missouri to bring a new industry to the state. This Aerotropolis bill will create a new economic development tool which will enable Missouri businesses and agriculture to compete in new ways in a rapidly shifting global economy. Missouri is in a unique position right now. In St. Louis, we have an uncongested un airport that has the potential to be an international air freight way for import, export, and distribution of goods throughout the entire world. What was once the gateway to the West can now be the gateway to the world. What makes this bill very unique, and unlike some of the more controversial tax credits out there, the tax credits included in this bill have sunsets, caps, and most importantly, they are not given to the new and they are not given unless the new industry is actually brought into the state. This economic plan is anchored on St. Louis building an international gateway for airlines. I know there have been discussions of various out airlines looking at placing routes to and from Lambert Airfield. This bill will help ensure when those planes land here in St. Louis and go back to their country of origin, they're full of Missouri agricultural products and products assembled and made here in Missouri. A lot of what we do is dealing with the competition. Maybe we have a good year versus Kansas, we have a bad year versus Illinois. The next year maybe we sharpen our tools and we have a better year versus Kansas or Illinois. But we're dealing with an ever-shrinking pie. And a lot of it is reallocation. TIF is a great example. One big box moves down the road in Manchester Road. Um, there's no net gain there. What we're talking about here and why this is exciting and why it's been referred to as the big ideas, we're talking about new jobs we're talking about new investment. We're talking about an air commerce industry that just simply doesn't exist in this state right now that is real. And the opportunity is there for us to take it in a smart, thoughtful way. And this Aerotropolis legislation um, uh, aims to get at that issue. And so. I think this bill and what we're trying to do as a state, not as a city, but as a state, is bring one of the greatest assets we have back. And I think if people understand that the state of Missouri needs an airport that can compete in the world. We have the infrastructure, we have four runways, and uh, I know there was a couple of comments asked about the ability in Springfield or Kansas City. When you talk about cargo aircraft, you talk about heavy landed 747, 777, 777 freighters, probably not able to land in Springfield, certainly could in Kansas City. But we have an airport that is utilized at 40% of its capacity today. With that large hub facility, you have a large operating budget. And the difficulty we have as an airport right now in being sustainable and trying to attract even passenger traffic is that we're operating at a medium revenue level. With the changes that we've had as a large hub to still a, a large operating airport, but we have half of the revenues coming in. And one of the, the sad pieces, when I took this job and I started looking at how we're going to sustain Lambert for the next decade and two, three, four decades to come, it became very clear that if we don't generate some alternative revenues outside of passenger airplanes, and not that we will forget about trying to grow passenger traffic, but in this industry that there is today, there's considerable um, lack of growth domestically in passenger traffic in the next three years. Airlines are continuing to merge, they're continuing when they merge to cut traffic, so there's not going to be a great deal of potential for that. 
in the next two to three years. We have to look at what other revenues. And we're an airport that is generating 2% of our revenues off of cargo. We generate about $170 million a year. 2% comes from cargo. That's pathetic. And when you look at an airport like Memphis, where 60% of their revenues are coming from FedEx, which has 30,000 jobs, by the way, on the airport, just in Memphis. If you take a look at an airport like Indianapolis, which just built a brand new terminal, that was built because you have a secondary cargo hub there that is generating about 50% of the revenues at that airport. We're at two. So it is critical that we bring cargo into Lambert. And people ask me all the time, well, why aren't you bringing in domestic cargo? The reality is no amount of money that we as a city or a state could offer FedEx or UPS is going to get them to come and relocate to St. Louis. International cargo hub doesn't exist today per se. And one of the reasons we reached out initially to the Chinese is because they said they're going to build one. I took this job 15 months ago, uh, certainly about 15 months after the whole process had already started about trying to look at a cargo hub and create within a region more of a business-to-business -business opportunity with foreign investment. When I came on board, I think we elevated and quickly started talking and negotiating with Chinese airlines, trying to understand what it is they want to do. And they became very clear that their government has said, we are going to become a greater presence in the U.S. in freighters. And we're going to put a hub in the U.S. in the next two years. And that was a year and a half ago. So here we are at a point where China has, has a goal, and if you all know, they, they carry out their missions once they set one. They have a goal of creating a hub in the Midwest for China cargo activity. But with that, they have a goal of creating a larger infrastructure with a world international connectivity, especially into South America. <coughs> And what they shared with us is that they've tied that goal to the export growth out of the U.S. by 2015. So today you can fill airplanes coming out of China right and left. There's plenty of imports. There's a gap in the export. And we as a country have said we're going to double our exports by 2015. They've tied their goal to that. So we have made a case that says we're the perfect airport for you to do it. From a cost perspective and a lack of congestion, you can get your product in and out of St. Louis and you can get it there without customs delays, you can get it there without trucking delays, we have great infrastructure in terms of rail, water, highway, air, whatever the case may be. They believe that. Um, I come here wearing two hats tonight as President of the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry and also I've been serving as Vice Chair of the Midwest China Hub Commission. Senator Schmidt alluded to this as the, the China Hub Project, which it has been to a certain extent, but we've always had the idea in mind that this would go truly international. That, that China hub would become the China spoke, and the hub would actually be the St. Louis airport with connect connectivity to South America and other places. So it's, it's truly a great opportunity for the region. And I, I stress region. I was brought into this about three years ago and with Steve and, and a few other of the key people, and I said, I, I get the, the the zest of what we're trying to do here. What's what do we bring to the table from the Missouri Chamber? And they said backhaul, which is what you put in the plane to take <laughs> back to China, as Rhonda expressed. Said it, thirty percent full on average going back over. But there's one point two to one point five billion people in China that are, is the fastest growing middle class in the history of the world, and they're climbing up the value chain as they earn more money. So that. Midwest beef or ag products, electronics, high-tech manufacturing. The, the brand made in America is still very attractive to the rest of the world. It, it, it sells a, a quality level that you just don't encounter. But there's several organizations here tonight that have teamed together, and I, I should start by saying I'm also representing Mike Jones from St. Louis County who chairs the uh, Midwest China Hub Commission. Uh, we're fully on board with this, obviously. We've spent years of effort along with uh, people like the RCGA, the World Trade Center, Organized Labor, the State of Missouri, the City, the County, to put this together. A lot of time and treasure has gone into making this making this a reality. Um, Airtropolis gets us over the line. Uh, if you look at trying to create the environment for that new sector uh, of the economy, it is the freight forwarders. These are the agents, they're the middlemen. We need those people here, and they need the incentive to be here versus uh, coming out of their comfort zone in Chicago or DFW or wherever they are right now. 
Um, I will mention that rarely do you see a unique, diverse group like what's been assembled to push this effort. And it, it is truly bipartisan. Uh, Senators Bond and McCaskill, now Senator Blunt's engaging on it, several of the congressional delegation, Governors Holden, Blunt, and Nixon, Lieutenant Governor Kinder, the St. Louis County Executive Charles Charlie Dooley, mm -hmm. Mayor Slay. Uh, most recently we had Ryan Sylvie and Mike Tallboy with us as when we went to Beijing and Shanghai last August, September to get the good news that we were getting an airline to come and negotiate with, with Rhonda and the team. Uh, we've met with the highest ranking Chinese officials and that's through the good work of Steve and, and Stephen Perry who we've talked about in prior hearings, our, our consultant on this from the London Export Company. Uh, in, including, you all might remember, uh, those of you that were here, uh, the Chinese Ambassador Joe who came down and spent the night at the Governor's Mansion. So what we've been able to do is connect with the very highest decision makers in China on blessing the, the, to, the, to establish this route. Now we're at the stage of doing, making the business equation make sense, which is why Aerotropolis comes into play and is so important. I think Senator Schmidt did a great job explaining also the state is not out any money on this. There's no credit or benefit issued until these buildings and these, these employers are located. So in that way, it's a fiscally responsible approach to this. I know Steve probably wants to say a few things here, and I'd be happy to take any questions, but we fully support this. It's the culmination of, of a heck of a lot of effort that's, that's gone into this. And I'll read you a quote that was from an AP article that appeared in Business Week just yesterday. The state nicknamed the Crossroads of Indiana wants to be, become a preferred landing spot for cargo planes, but industry leaders say Indiana could have a tough time attracting flights from neighboring states because many airports are competing for the same business and freight companies are resistant to change. What Airtropolis does is give them a reason to change. We hope we have your support for this. Thank you.